All right, I am back from my section hike of the Superior Hiking Trail. I went from Judge Magni CR, Judge CR Magni State Park to uh, the Oberg Mountain Trailhead parking lot. I jumped out at Pincushion Mountain um, and had a, a zero, a Nero and a zero in Grand Marais, which was great. Um, and then I jumped back in at Cascade River State Park and went from there to Oberg. So. Um, I don't know how many miles that ended up being, weirdly. I think it might have been 48 or 52. Uh, I'll have to do that math. I don't really care. I did everything I set out to do, and uh, I didn't camp the last night at Onion River um, campsite, which I had thought I would do. It was right next to Oberg, but it was just pouring down rain, so I made it to Oberg. I was going to walk like a mile and a half past that and camp and then go back to my car the next day. I didn't do that. Uh, and I don't regret that decision because it was pouring down rain. So I'm about to put all of my gear away and I thought I would just go through it and talk about what I liked and didn't like. Um, so first up is the Z-Pax Arc Haul. Uh, I, loved, I loved it. It was my friend. Um, it fit great. It, I was able, it's got a thousand points of adjustment on it um, and I think I got it pretty much to where I like it. Uh, my only complaint is that I'm I'm little and I can't get my arms around back to where the, the side pockets are to hold the water bottles. Um, so it was really hard for me to like grab a water bottle easily and drink from it and put it back while hiking. Uh, if I wanted it really, really bad, I would I could find the way to torque my shoulder and my elbow and my wrist to get it done, but it was very unnatural and difficult. Um, the other thing that I didn't love about it, but I can't figure out a way to fix it, I think it's the best it can be, is that I went ahead and got the little pouch that attaches to the, um, to the uh, hip belt. Um, that, and then I got the, the only other added thing I got was the, the V-strap. Um, I think it's like, you know, for a bear canister or whatever, and I ended up using that for my tent, uh, which was great when it was just wet, when I had a soggy, wet tent. I carried it on the outside and um, to keep everything from from getting wet. It was awesome. Uh, this this zipper pouch here is great to have, you know, my map and a candy bar or whatever handy, but uh, my phone, I kept my phone in there. It's really the only thing I accessed over and over again. And uh, it's just, my only complaint about that is you can't zip it and unzip it with one hand. So you've got your trick and pulls and, you know, it's the same with the water. Like you pretty much just sort of have to stop and put things down and zip it and unzip it because uh, it's just kind of loose and floppy. Um, I, I don't know a fix for that. It's also just like far enough on the side to where you, it's hard to even use two hands. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it can go any more towards the middle. There's no fix. I just kind of didn't like that. All right. Now we'll talk about food. So uh, I ordered outdoor herbivore. Um, I'm a vegan, well, plant food based. Like I have a down <laughs> jacket and a down uh, sleeping bag. So I'm not really vegan, uh, but I don't eat meat or dairy. Um, and outdoor herbivore had a, a menu that I liked. So I ordered from them. I got like 170 bucks worth of food. That's 10 days worth of food. It was more than I needed. Um, but if I included my, my days off at Cascade River State Park and like coming up and down, it would have been enough. I just didn't eat it all. Um, so that's the thing I learned about myself is I don't eat lunch. I just don't. So I came back with like this much food. There's a lot of food in these two bags. It weighs a lot. I carried this one, you know, the first half and this one the second half. Unnecessary weight. Um, I never felt like my pack was that heavy anyway, but it could have been even lighter. Uh, their breakfasts and dinners were great. I would, there's too much food for dinner. Um, I had to like pour it back into the thing it came from and pack out extra food. One night, uh, another night, I just sat there and sadly ate way beyond my full point. Uh, just, you can't throw it out on the ground, so you've got to, like, pack it out or eat it. Um, so just know that about yourself, or learn it, you know. I learned it kind of, it's not the hard way, it wasn't that hard to carry that food, but it was annoying. Um, good news is I have a lot of extra food for the next hike that I have just already here, and I will eat it all. 
Uh, I cooked it in a, a Tokes Titanium 750 milliliter stove. Um, it has a little lid. I used a BRS stove, this tiny, tiny little guy. Um, you just attach this to a fuel canister. I took a four ounce canister with me and a spare four ounce canister because I was afraid that I would run out of fuel, but I didn't. Again, I what I boil. I would boil uh, not every morning, but every morning I would boil water for coffee and sometimes for food. But I mostly ate my breakfast cold. Uh, the, it was an option of cold cereal or hot cereal, and I did it cold almost every time. Um, so one boil in the morning, and then one at night for coffee, and one at night for dinner. Uh, so probably three to four cups of water per day uh, for those six days. And the, this made it through, and it came to a boil really fast out there. I did a test here, and it was like 11 minutes for two cups of water to come to a boil. And out there, it was really just like in a heartbeat that water was boiling. I don't know if it was, it wasn't that high up. The altitude is somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 feet. I don't know, the temperature maybe, I don't know. Um, so I didn't need that second canister. If I had it to do all over again, I would still take the second canister because these, this just, it all seems unpredictable. Like the fuel efficiency of this little stove, which cost $13, I'm just not going to trust. Um, I took this little fuel stand, canister stand, which was, uh, wasn't super necessary on that trail, but I could see how it would be very useful. Um, so the fuel canister and the stand and the little, the little tiny lighter, they all fit in the stove and I just stuck a bandana in there to help me clean and dry everything. Um, I used a Tokes Titanium a spork, long spork uh, to eat with. Uh, those are more useful for those bag meals, like those mountain whatever meals, uh, but it's fine. It's totally useful. I was glad to have a spork because I had noodles that were soupy. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was all this. This is what it all came in. I didn't use the stuff sack for the sport. This is a stuff sack for a Z-Pax medium stuff sack for my clothes. It was more than enough room, weirdly. It looks tiny, but I had way more than enough room. I carried long johns and sleep socks uh, for sleeping, an extra pair of socks for hiking. Uh, I had shorts and leggings, so whichever ones I weren't wearing were in there, and a shirt that I wore for hiking the whole time. Um, so obviously way, way more than enough room. A lot of people use this as a pillow, uh, you know, with their clothes in it. I didn't even have enough clothes to like make a pillow out of this. <laughs> but that takes me, um, oh, I didn't finish the food, sorry. So all of the food I kept in an op sack, which is supposed to be odor proof. Um, and then I put that inside the z -Pack's bear bag, which comes with a little rock sack, and it comes with 50 feet of um, paracord, which I have in there. So all of that went in this. This, you know, rolls down, closes up, hang it from a tree using this carabiner. I used the PCT hang, which is just stupid when you're a short person and that there aren't very many high branches or say there are no high branches because I think bears could literally just walk up and knock my bag down. I credit the op sack for them not knowing the bag was there. Um, I'll talk about the, the bear bag hanging on another <laughs> time. So now we'll go to uh, my little z pack Z seat. I imagined myself stopping and having lunch or sitting somewhere pretty and looking at it for a while and using this to sit on, which I did not do but one time. One time. Um, but the rest of the time, this was still really useful and I would take it again. Uh, this was a, a landing pad for my backpack a lot when I needed to take it off to say get water out or to like deal with something that was in the little zippy pouch. Um, you know, the trail is mostly pretty muddy. So this kept my backpack from picking up a bunch of dirt and mud. Um, I also used it as like a, a doormat for my tent. So my shoes were on there. It's cushy and it was nice. The tent is awkward to get in and out of. So like I could put my knees on here and they wouldn't get all gross and or hurt. Whatever. It had a few uses. I would take it again. It weighs almost nothing. I dig it. Um, I think... 
I had a couple more opsacks. Uh, one for just trash trash, which I barely use. Like, I think I used a Kleenex once. And then this is for poo trash. And again, I didn't really use this either because uh, the Superior Hiking Trail has latrines. So uh, I was very, very smart about going to the bathroom at latrines. I never went to the bathroom off trail, like on the trail, except one time. Um, one time I had to pee real bad and I couldn't make it to a campsite. But there, there were plenty of campsites sprinkled everywhere. Every campsite has a latrine. There's no reason to be like digging a hole and pooing in it or anything like that on the Superior Hiking Trail. There's I can't imagine that you would ever need to do it. The, I mean, me having to pee, like if I could have just waited 30 minutes, I would have made it to a campsite. Um, but I couldn't wait. Uh, okay. Water. Speaking of pee. So I used the um, MSR Trail Shot, which I'll just take out of the bag. I also brought Aquamira drops just in case because I didn't really know, I just don't know that much about water filtration or what's safe or what's not. I never used the Aquamira drops. I took all, all my drinking water that whole trip out of the um, rivers and a couple of creeks. Um, so this, this guy is only good if you are alone and you don't need a ton of water, which both of those things were true for me. Like I was carrying... Uh, two liters, maybe one and a half liters. Um, but for dinner, you know, I'd fill up two two liter bottles and one 0.7 liter bottle. Um, so I had 2.7 liters that I had to fill up every night uh, with this. And this is, it's like a stress ball. So you just have to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. And, um, you know, you put this end in the water and this end uh, just pours into your, into your bottle. And it's just, it's slightly awkward. It's a lot of like work to squeeze this thing, but it totally worked. And I got all the water I needed and I never got sick. So I'm gonna say yes to the trail shot. And again, I'm gonna use it until it is not a thing anymore. Now, if I'm going with uh, somebody else, then I think I would get something like a Sawyer squeeze. Like if I needed to get more water than just two liters to get me through the night in the morning, because um, 2.7 liters got me dinner, it helped me clean stuff and it got me breakfast in the morning and then as soon as breakfast was over I would have to go get more water. Um, so I would go through 2.7 liters from night to morning um, easily. If I needed to get more than that I wouldn't use this. This is just, it's too labor intensive. <laughs> it's not that hard though. Honestly it takes like a minute and a half to two minutes to fill up a one liter bottle. So as long as you can kind of make yourself comfortable wherever you are set up you can just do that. It's fine. Um, all right, we'll talk sleep system. So I uh, I got most of my uh, stuff from watching two vlogs. One is um, Dixie's vlog, Homemade Wanderlust, and then the other was Darwin on the Trail. Um, and Darwin on the Trail had a vlog about how to kind of do all of this on the cheap. Which after I bought, I you know the Z Packs our call was my like money my money purchase and the and the shoes like so the shoes in the backpack I felt like those are my body and I wanted to like really good things for that everything else I got using Darwin on the trails um, vlog so I got this little trichology pillow uh, you know like I said some people use their stuff sack for their clothes or whatever I just I want a pillow uh, and this is very tiny look how tiny it is um, and it doesn't weigh much and it's very comfy so yes to the Trekology pillow. Uh, I used this Outdoorsman Lab um, sleep pad. It was fine. Again, it was like a buck fifty or whatever. It was super cheap. The first night I had a hole in it. I don't know how I punctured it, but I punctured it through and through. And I only found one side of the hole on the first night. So it just slowly deflated every 15 minutes that whole night. <laughs> it sucked. Um, and then the next morning I realized it probably had a tiny, tiny hole on the other side, which it did. So this is, I fixed it up with duct tape on the first night and it totally worked fine the rest of the time. I will use it until it is unusable, which probably won't be long because it's super cheap. It's kind of loud. I think um, if I were camping next to somebody else, they would be like, shh, but I wasn't. I had most of those campsites to myself, and almost all of them except for one. So 
Yes, it's fine. It's great. It worked great. Uh, sleeping bag is an Aegis Max sleeping bag. It was like a 20 degree bag, I think, or maybe a 30 degree bag. I don't remember. I don't care. I hate it. It just, uh, like, it never got below 40 degrees, I don't think. Like, that first night was freezing and I had on all my clothes. Literally, like, my sleep, my uh, long johns and my leggings over there, and two pairs of socks, and my uh, shirt over that, and this just like, and I like zipped my face in there, and I think that was my critical error, was the just the, the humidity of my own breath hit what I think is probably duck down and not goose down, and I think it's probably not very clean duck down, and it just immediately, like, the next day smelled like dog. So this thing smells like wet dog, and it did not keep me warm. Um, so what I'm going to do, I mean, it costs like $89, I think. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to wash it, um, because I can't really ruin it at this point, right? Like, it's already, like not that great but I don't want to just waste it so I'm going to try to see if I can get the smell out of it and if then then just use it and knowing that it doesn't it's not for cold um, so if I can make it smell decent I'll use it for you know warmer climates but man it just stinks uh, then I have the 3F Lian Shan um, ultralight tent this was great it, again, this was like a ninety dollar tent, uh, and it can't. It's it it's it worked great. I don't even have things to say about it. It's like fine. Again, I'll use it until it is no longer usable, which probably won't be that long from now because it's super cheap. But it kept me dry. It like made it through two pretty serious thunderstorms on the trail. Before I got to the trail, I slept one night at a state park in Minnesota and it took on water. I think that must have been my pitch. Um, and I got much better at pitching it, as of course. Uh, I went on this hike and it, it was great. Um, super light. Uh, the whole thing, I think my whole like shelter thing maybe weighs four pounds. Um, I know it could be lighter, but like the z -Plex, the Z Packs Duplex is six hundred dollars, and this was ninety. I just I love them, and I want to support local everything, but I'm also not rich, so um, that's really it. I, I I'm not going to go through all the tiny things like the little med kit and the um, hygiene kit, and you know I just had everything in little Ziploc bags, um, and I did my own little shakedown halfway through and realized like I'm not going to use the razor. I'm not going to use the whatever. So I took all that stuff out. Um, I had a little electronics kit with, a, you know, a battery and um, it's just right here. So I'll show it. I had this, uh, this is really great. This little power bank. I have no idea what the brand is, but um, it's solar and that actually, like I kept it on the outside of my pack. And, that, and it recharged it a little bit, actually, one day, and that was pretty great. Um, and then I have a super cheap headlamp that I used, you know, only when I needed to go to the latrines, which are hilariously difficult to get to in most of those camps. And it's just a cheap little uh, black diamond. It's rechargeable. Um, and then my Nano and my phone, uh, both of which I used a lot. So this was, a, this was an important little kit. Um, I think that's it.